Tiki Hut Media. Pop the top on your favorite beer or whatever you drink from Tiki Hut Media. This is Soul Ramblings with Jerry Wicker. Hey there, Jerry here. Got my Miller High Life cracked open today. Yeah, going on the cheap today on the Soul Ramblings podcast. Here to talk about faith and life over a beer or three. And of course, last week, we missed last week. I took a week off. Got a lot of things going on and uh, ran out of time last week. Didn't get an episode out last week. But we're back this week and glad you could join us. Which reminds me, be sure to click subscribe wherever you're listening to this episode. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and also now Samsung Podcasts and Podchaser. But wherever you're listening, be sure to click that subscribe button. That way you never miss a new episode of Soul Ramblings Podcast. Now, I know I am not the only Christian who looks at some words of Jesus and sighs to themselves. My faith journey would be so much easier if Jesus just had never said this, right? You said the same thing, I'm sure. And I suspect I, if I started making a list of things I wish Jesus never said, it would consist of most of the gospel. Simply put, following Jesus is simple, but it's not easy. One of the things I wish Jesus didn't flat out say was, don't judge in Matthew 7, 1, because I do judge people. I spent the formative parts of my childhood living in Tennessee, where the phrase, bless your, his, her, their hearts, bless their hearts, was ingrained in me. The phrase is a nice way to pass on judgment. Things like, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed, bless her heart. Bless his heart, but not even a mother could love that face. Or how about this one? Bless their hearts, at least they tried. The desire to judge my fellow human beings always lurks within my heart and conscience, and sometimes it can feel good to pass on judgment, albeit silently. That tendency is a defect in the factory settings of humanity, and not just me. Perhaps it stems from our very own insecurity and the things we fear we may lack, so it helps us establish ourselves over others to secure a spot in this world. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, Jesus tells us that a Pharisee and a tax collector went to pray at the temple, and the Pharisee stood up and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like everyone else, crooks, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week give a tenth of everything I receive. It's easy to say, well, he's pompous, a self-righteous jerk, bless his heart. However, if we're honest with ourselves, while maybe we don't pray like that, there are times we've had such sentiments lurking in our hearts. I don't think Jesus slams the door completely on judgment by saying that we shouldn't have high standards for ourselves or those others. After all, he leaves an opening for us to help our neighbor with a splinter in their eye after we remove the log in our own eye. Remember that? Jesus tells us to not judge because judging may make us feel morally superior and cause us to elevate ourselves higher and higher via our moral tower of Babel, unseating God and placing ourselves on God's chair. Jesus also tells us not to judge because of what we do to people after we deem they don't measure up. We dehumanize them. We burden them with things to do, accomplish, achieve, to meet our standards so that they can be accepted. It'd be one thing if that's what God did, but God doesn't do that. God looks at humanity, and instead of demanding that we meet up to God's standards, God looks upon us with mercy, grace, compassion, and love. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved you that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn you, but to save you through him. I am looked upon with mercy, compassion, grace, and love. God asked me to do the same for my fellow humans. I'm invited to remember that though we may not be in the same boat, we're all experiencing the same storm. And we're all just trying to get through it together and should help one another when we can. Just because you're in a yacht and I'm in a canoe does not mean that I am less than you. And just because I'm in a canoe and you're holding on to life, floating on a door that clearly has enough room for two people, does not give me permission to think you are less than I am. 
The call to not judge, for me, is less of a reprimand and more of a call to be compassionate, gracious, and loving, particularly to those who feel the desire to say, bless your heart. The more loving I am, the less time I have to be judgmental. The more I seek beauty in the people I meet, the less I'm inclined to pick them apart. The more I intentionally look for the image of Christ in everyone, the less I am tempted to dehumanize, which, admittedly, is difficult. But like I said earlier, following Jesus is simple, but it's not easy. The path Jesus invites us to follow, however, is that path that is filled with an abundance of grace, hope, joy, and love. We'll be right back after this short break. You are not only saving a child's life, you're breathing life back into that family. We have phenomenal research, outstanding clinical care, and the generosity of public, which allow us to treat patients regardless of what it takes. At St. Jude, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live. Because of you. Because of you. Because of you. There is St. Jude. Donate now at stjude.org. This episode is brought to you in part by He Gets Us, a national campaign influencing millions to think differently about Jesus. Through broadcast ads, social media videos, and digital marketing, the He Gets Us campaign is connecting with people in the middle of their daily routines. More importantly, it's introducing those who are skeptical about faith to the radical love of Jesus by intentionally focusing on how relatable his experiences were. Within a couple of months, they've had over 31 million views on YouTube, not to mention Facebook, Instagram, and broadcast networks while focusing on just 10 test markets. If any of these people had your way for answers, you can be ready by visiting hegetsuspartners.com. That's hegetsuspartners.com. A shorter episode this week. We'll be back next week with a full episode of Soul Ramblings Podcast. Hope to see you here then. I want to thank you for the gift and privilege of your time today. I know there are a lot of podcasts you could spend your time listening to, and I really, really do appreciate you spending your time with us today. Be sure to get social with us. You can join us on Facebook or Instagram. Links to those pages are in the show notes of this episode. Check out our blog at soulramblingspodcast.wordpress.com or feel free to shoot us an email, soulramblingspodcast at gmail.com. And here is the last piece of advice. If you believe in goodness and if you value the approval of God, fix your minds on whatever is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and praiseworthy. Until next time on Soul Ramblings Podcast, I'm Jerry Wicker. Drink responsibly. Keep the conversation going. Grace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Soul Ramblings with Jerry Wicker. Download new episodes every week. And if you haven't already, subscribe and be sure to leave us a rating and review. Soul Ramblings is a Tiki Hut Media production. Mm-hmm.